Good morning. Welcome to Plymouth Congregational Church of Fort Wayne on this third Sunday of Advent. As we say here at Plymouth, whoever you are and wherever you are on life's journey, you and your questions are welcome here. At Plymouth, we have four covenants that we say each week as part of our connection with the United Church of Christ and saying about what we're about as a church. First, we are an open and affirming congregation to our lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer brothers, sisters, siblings, friends, neighbors, strangers, loved ones, anyone who would be seeking out a safe and welcoming place to be part of a spiritual community. Second, we are a just peace church, working for a just peace in our world where no one is oppressed, marginalized, ex exploited, or left out. Third, we are an earthwise stewardship congregation, encouraging practices personally as part of our church and in the world to protect our planet, to heal the environment, and to make it a sustainable place for the next seven generations and beyond. And fourth, we are a global mission church, intensely local, intentionally global, working with partners here around the country and around the world in service. There are a number of announcements in the digital bulletin, so I encourage you to check them out. If you are not receiving the bulletin and you would like to, uh, first, uh, double check that it's not in your junk folder in your email, but if you don't find it there, contact the church office and they will help connect you so that you are getting that digital bulletin. I will make a couple of announcements from there. Uh, one is today at 1130, Congregational Life will be having its first Zoom coffee fellowship time. And so if you've been missing having coffee with other church members, uh, get your favorite uh, cup of coffee, hop online at 1130 today, and be able to check in and spend some fellowship time with one another. Second, the Evangelism and Marketing Board um, has invited us to be Christmas gift sponsors for the women at Cedars Hope uh, next door. And I think all those spots are taken up, but for those who have volunteered, just a reminder to drop off your pre-wrapped gifts this Saturday, December 19th, between 9 and 11 at the Berry Street uh, office entrance, and an E&M representative will be there to receive that gift for their distribution. For all other announcements, again, please check out our digital bulletin. At this time, I would invite you to join with me in prayer. Merciful God, in this time of preparation, help us to be attuned to who you are calling us to become as your people. May our time of worship together refresh and restore us for the week ahead. If we are empty, fill us with your hope. If we are fearful, move us to your peace. If we are weary, help us find ways to rejoice. May this topsy-turvy time become a space to upend the inequities we see among us and around us and to establish your reign of compassion helping our weary world to rejoice once again. May we as your people be inspired to be your partners in that holy work. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus our Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This morning, we light three candles.
The first two candles are the candles of hope. And peace. The third candle is the candle of joy. Its light, lighting awakens our joy, challenging us to embrace the glory of God. May our joy overflow as the mighty works of God are remembered and as we participate in bringing good news of great joy. There is enough for all. is waiting to see the promised one and open furrows the sowing of our God all the world bound and struggling seeks true liberty it cries out for justice and searches for the truth thus says the prophet to those of Israel a virgin mother will bear Emmanuel, one whose name is God with us, our Savior shall be, through whom hope will blossom once more within our hearts. Mountains and valleys will have to be made plain, open new highways, new highways for our God, who is now coming closer, so come all and see, and open the doorways as wide as wide can be. Friends, may we join heart, mind, and spirit in prayer. Eternal and loving spirit, who inspires and inhabits the praises of your people, lift us above life's anxieties and irritations into serenity and peace. Give us appreciative hearts, O oh God, that we may rightly count our joys in friendship that sustains us, patience that bears with us, mercy that forgives us, love that uplifts us. We rejoice before you, O oh God. In the cleansing beauty of nature, the reassuring companionship of friends and faith, the comfort of home, the sustaining strength of fond memories, and the encouragement of high hopes. We rejoice before you, O oh God. We pray this day, O oh God, let us be dreamers, creative and courageous in the visions we have as a people who believe you come to us and speak to us in our generation. You surprise and guide us to move and act beyond expected norms, and in so doing, we become bearers, like Mary, of your good news. We pray this day, O oh God, for all those on our prayer list, for all those that we hold within our hearts and minds, especially this day, as coronavirus infections and deaths number in overwhelming multitudes. We pray for health care and essential workers in hospitals and on the front lines of helping people. We pray for families who have found themselves in the depths of grief, for loved ones who have died. We pray for those who are suffering losses of employment and income, who now face daily threat of hunger and homelessness. 
We pray for teachers and students of all grade levels who are having to adjust and who are losing the rhythm of their learning. O oh God, be with us, be with all those who find especially in this season a growing despair or confusion of wondering who and what to believe. So help us all to place trust in your guidance as we pray for scientists and infectious disease specialists and vaccine production that it will be effective and safe. We pray, O oh God, this day and give thanks with joy for families and friends who are finding new ways of connecting and supporting one another, even though they must remain distant. And we pray that through the challenges of these days, that you will help us to find deep within ourselves a sense of joy and peace, that you will keep us from being petulant and contentious human beings, that you will deliver us from cynicism, self-pity, and the luxury of cheap melancholy. Also deliver us, O oh God, from anger and envy, from ingratitude and unlovely brooding, from inordinate dependence on things earthly and temporary that do not satisfy. Above all and through all, O oh God, we give thanks for the hope, the peace, and the joy that can come only from you and that we see revealed in your only begotten child, the one we proclaim, Jesus, our Savior, who is our hope and expectation and in whose name we pray, amen. When I was a seeker, I sought both night and day. I asked the Lord to help me, and he showed me the way.
made me a watchman upon the city walls. And if I am a Christian, I am the least of all. Tell it on the mountain. Our scripture reading for this morning comes from the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 1, verses 46 to 55. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is His name. His mercy is for those who fear Him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with His arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. This is our sacred story. Thanks be to God. Friends, my title this morning for this homily is a subtle joy in a weary world. Joy does not simply happen to us. We have to choose joy and keep choosing it every day, counseled Henri Nouwen. I believe that is what the gospel writer of Luke is giving to Mary in the intense song of praise giving her the choice to rejoice because of her trust in the God who keeps promises. The placing of what we know as the Magnificat in Mary's voice is akin to this song first being sung by Hannah in the Old Testament. You remember, God saved Hannah and her young son Ishmael. Hannah was the maidservant that elderly barren Sarah had sent to husband Abraham that she might conceive a child and bear for Abraham a son and thus an heir. And so Hannah gave birth to Ishmael. When previously barren Sarah gave birth to Isaac, Hannah was now seen as a threat. Sarah became jealous of Hannah and her son and insisted to Abraham that he banish them into the wilderness, very likely to die. By God's intervention, Hannah and Ishmael survived. First Hannah, now many generations later, Mary. Two young women, girls really, among the most vulnerable and marginalized people in their ancient culture, being the voices that proclaim God's overturning and upending of the unjust and powerful. 
this song proclaims God's reversing the world, making it upside down and backwards from its humanly orchestrated oppression and domination systems. Mary's song offers joy that ultimately earth will align with God's righteousness, God's desired order, lifting up the poor, rescuing the least, the lost, the lowly. Mary's song of praise, my heart rejoices, certainly does not sound subtle. It isn't. In fact, it is courageous with prophetic proclamation. Yet in Mary's outspokenness, I see a poignant connection to our image for this morning's theme of joy. The artwork that Reverend Timothy and I have chosen for today is one I first found in an online search. I can't tell you all the varieties of phrases I used in searching, but it was some combination of the words people, weary, looking, seeking, rejoicing. Eventually, I was led to this painting, A New Day, by artist John Holyfield. One aspect that made this picture strikingly appropriate for this third Sunday is the color pink in the figure's clothing, consistent with our pink candle of joy. This past Tuesday, I decided to seek out the artist online to let him know we appreciated his painting. I was able to find his studio and an email address and sent him a quick note. I was so thrilled when in 24 hours, Mr. Holyfield replied and said he was honored for us to use his image. He even included a digital link that when viewed reveals stunning detail that I hadn't been able to see prior with what I found online. Entering into the picture's context, similar to entering into a scriptural text, a depth of comprehension is evoked. In this instance, I find a subtle joy finely expressed in the layers of brushstrokes that bring emerging faces and story to life. The strange reality this season is that for many of us, our joy is more subtle and subdued. The weight of the pandemic, magnified by political dissonance and cultural division, does make it challenging to coax joy from our souls. Shadows of sorrow shape shift in our peripheral vision as we attempt to find and feel joy. Like a woman in labor about to give birth, we need a focal point, an image that sustains our concentration, inspires our energy to keep pushing to bring joy into our lives. I have to say, I appreciate the sentiment of those households who have decorated early this year, who have put up and illuminated their outside Christmas lights to express a need for joy. I say thank you to those who are brightening up this especially dark winter. I also see a crucial change to the 2020 emotional Christmas guest list. Revelry often was first to be invited, given the center of attention, 
with boisterous laughing and singing. But that kind of presence is very risky in the midst of a coronavirus pandemic. Ravelry expels too many potentially infectious molecules into the air. Reverie is my guest of honor. Reverie's quiet presence exudes an appreciation for silence, for contemplation. Reverie simply basks in the warmth of candle glow or the serene colors of Christmas lights or the glistening of starlight on upturned faces. Reverie understands the subtleties of joy. The image, a new day, is an invitation into subtle joy. Click on the picture in the weekly bulletin. When you do, it will bring up a larger format in which the finer detail is revealed. Initially, I was drawn in by the expressions on the faces of figures in the foreground. I see a reverent awe, a subtle joy, a questioning wonder, perhaps, as they gaze upward and outward. When I saw the detailed image, I noticed the two figures on the left arms upraised in praise and prayer. The two background figures on the right standing in perfect posture of respect. Then, looking to the background center, more figures ready to emerge, one extending a hand to the other. And finally, the realization that there is a whole procession of figures making their way to this opening out to this wondrous new day. As I was contemplating this beautiful painting, on Wednesday evening, I happened to hear Leia Salonga singing the words it's a new dawn, it's a new day, it's a new life. I was moved as I connected these words to this painting. Even more so was when I found the iconic interpretation of this song by Nina Simone recorded in 1965. For me, it was an experience of reverie, of knowing, of remembering again that God's spirit is busy working constantly to help us connect with one another in meaningful and joyful expression. I encourage you to take some time this week to view the painting in its finer detail, to use perhaps the recording of uh, what title is called Feeling Good, but carries the phrase, it's a new dawn, it's a new day, it's a new life, or whatever song of joy suits your preference. May your experience of joy this season, whether outspoken like Mary's song of praise or subtle, like the figures in this painting. May your experience make your heart rejoice and bring you in awe and wonder to a new day. Thanks be to God. Amen. With joy draw water from the spring, salvation's living well. The Holy One is in your midst, glad
that praises sing and tell. With love the poor will be received, the proud will turn aside, and faithfulness will be a path, and righteousness the guide. The wolf shall lie down with the lamb, the calf and lion play. God's peace shall dwell within the land, a child shall show the way. With joy draw water from the spring, salvation's living well. The Holy One is in your midst, glad praises sing and tell. Friends, I invite you to receive the benediction. May God grant you a reverent awe, a subtle joy, and a soul-deep wonder that will carry you through these days of Advent into our celebration of Christmas. And may you be lifted up and carried forth for all that the Spirit gives to you as gift and as choice for you to reach out to anyone who crosses your path and sees your joy. Thanks be to God. <laughs>